seen you seen Errol Spence, Sean Porter. You seen Errol Spence, um, uh, uh, Kell Brook. You seen Terrence Crawford, Kell Brook. Terrence Crawford, Sean Porter, and you tell me, you know, the difference in those two fights that both of us had previous mm. with the two same opponents. Terrence Triangle Theory Crawford, he back at it. He compares his victories over mutual opponents to that of Errol Spence Jr. In this video, I will explain why in the world of boxing, that is a no-no. I'll fully break that down. Make sure you guys enjoy. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon. I am the best in the business. Now, shout out to Gilly and Wallow. You know, they got a good chemistry, and they bring people on their podcast, and they get really some good reactions and, and good stuff. So shout out to them. They did an interview with Terrence Crawford, and... You heard the beginning clip that was Terrence Crawford on million dollars worth of game and his, I guess one of the baseline of his argument on why he's better than Errol Spence is a triangle theory. Now to the haters, I'm only going to give you a half a bar. There's some people say, oh, you're hating on Terrence Crawford. If you know, you know, I've never been a fan of triangle theories in the sport of boxing. I will explain in this particular video. So no matter who does these weird, bizarre triangle theories, I'm never a fan of it. But I know the Bud Buddies, they get mad and they say, oh, you're, you're, you're hating on Bud. But I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I am here to tell you what you need to hear. So I don't care about your thin skin because you can't take criticism and people who get mad because I'm speaking my honest opinion. Because the brilliant thing about YouTube is you don't have to watch me. That being said, moving on. The reason why I don't believe in triangle theories is because they never have worked in the sport of boxing. Never, never, ever, ever, ever have a triangle theory worked in boxing successfully. Not saying you can't think of one example of a triangle theory where X, Y, and Z breaks down. But what I am saying is for every one you do think of, I could think of two or three where the triangle theory doesn't play out because you have to understand most mother f don't know ish about boxing. They show enough the don't. So triangle theories don't work because you're not going to reduce the sweet science to some kind of mathematic or algebraic expression. That's not how it works. Different people have different qualities, different attributes. Timing is very pertinent in the sport of boxing. If you fought a guy, won't, 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 like, let's say Canelo, he knocked out Carlos Baldemir, who is a nasty fellow. Look it up. But anyway, Canelo was 19 and he brutally knocked out Carlos Baldemir. Other past greats like Floyd Mayweather didn't knock him out or Zab Judah, but they fought a prime Carlos Baldemir, not a 40, 41 year old Carlos Baldemir like Canelo did. And speaking of, since Floyd is the GOAT, Floyd fought Canelo. So even though Canelo had a more emphatic knockout of the same mutual opponent, Carlos Baldemir, what happened when Floyd, easy work, I ain't got to worry about it, hard work, dedication, when he fought Canelo, all that Baldemir stuff went out the window. Once again, that's one example of how triangle theories just don't work. Baltimore viciously knocked out by Canelo Alvarez. Floyd beat him in dominant fashion, but beat him in a more competitive fight, but he was in his prime. And then later on, when Floyd and Canelo fought, Canelo got spanked. So Crawford, he know or he should know better because he's a great boxer, that these triangle theories really don't work throughout boxing history. And Crawford's team is constantly saying, that X, Y, and Z, and you don't know about boxing. If you disagree with them, they say you don't know about boxing. So I think Crawford knows enough about boxing to know if, if you're talking about the history of the sport of boxing, I could think of several examples where triangle theories just don't really matter. They don't make any sense. And to use that as your speaking point is really concerning. 
And I would even venture to take it a step further and say it's not even just boxing. You could look at most sports. You would have to factor in who they were at the time of the meetup. For example, let's say we'll use the NBA. If Kobe Bryant was in the finals, which this is all fact, Kobe Bryant played in the finals in the 2008 finals against the Boston Celtics. One of the players was Ray Allen. So let's say in 2023, your boy Ego played a, a game, a one-on-one -on -one game against Ray Allen and destroyed him and I dropped 80 points on him, right? Just hypothetically, you got to work with me. 2023, I hoop with Ray Allen and I destroy him and I drop 80 points on him. Can you then say, oh, in 2008, Kobe Bryant didn't even drop 80 points on Ray Allen. So ego is the GOAT. Of course not. You would never say that because in 2008, Ray Allen was a younger player. Right now in 2023, Ray Allen is like 47, 48, pushing 50 years old, and he's retired. So it's a completely different Ray Allen. This is not he got game and Jesus Shuttleworth Ray Allen. So as I always say on my channel, context is everything. You need context to what you're saying. You can't say, oh, ego better than Kobe Bryant because even Kobe didn't do this to him because it was a completely different team in 2008 versus, you know, several years later. Boxing is no different. And I could do this all day because I'm the king of boxing. I'm the king of boxing talk. I'm the best in the business. I could do this all day. So look at Floyd Mayweather. Pacquiao made his name off of he had Floyd leftovers or guys that Floyd fought and he had quote unquote beat them better. Guys like Miguel Cotto got knocked out by Pacquiao. I think it was in the 11th round off the top of the dome. You had uh, Ricky Hatton. When Pacquiao fought him, it took only two rounds or so for Pacquiao to brutally knock him out. Floyd Mayweather, it was quasi competitive and then Floyd TKO'd him against the turnbuckle when Floyd fought Ricky Hatton. But guess what? Triangle theory. None of that matters. Oh, Pacquiao beat these guys better and all this other stuff, right? Because what happened when Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao fought? Manny Pacquiao got skunked. So again, I'm showing you live real-time examples how this is not a good logic uh, triangle theory in the world of boxing. And I'm not saying Terrence Crawford can't win, but your argument shouldn't be because you beat Sean Porter by stoppage and Errol Spence didn't. Sean Porter wasn't a podcaster when he fought Errol Spence. I was there live, right? He wasn't. He wasn't doing that. That hadn't. He actually started the podcast during the pandemic in 2020. He fought Errol Spence in 2019. So you fought different versions of Sean Porter. Sean Porter also said he had arthritis and knew he was going to retire. Same thing with Kell Brook. Kell Brook fought one other fight against an equally washed Amir Khan and cashed out in that, and then he retired. So both guys that Crawford is using to uplift, I guess, his resume, both guys retired within a fight or so of fighting you. And the last thing I will say, one of the biggest things that irks me with triangle theories is this. When you use a triangle theory, you also negate the fact of when Errol fought Sean Porter, what about he put so much punishment in such a grueling fight that that aged Sean Porter? You completely take this out of the equation. So by the time you get him, it's already a, a lesser version. We know this. Guys go into depression after fighting Errol Spence. Danny Garcia said he was depressed. Kell Brooks said he was depressed after the Spence fight. So what about that? What about the whole fact of guys may not be the same guy after they fight a given fighter? If you fight a Javante Davis, if you fight a Deontay Wilder, if you fight Errol Spence, better be if some guys aren't the same after these types of grueling fights against vicious punchers and, you know, that come forth style. Look at Mikey Garcia. Can we say Mikey Garcia was the same fighter? He took like a year plus off after the Errol Spence fight, right? And then he did an exhibition with Eric Morales, and then he came to lose to Sandor Martin, a, a vicious, huge underdog, and things like that. What are we talking about, bro? See, don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm the king of boxing, best in the business. Subscribe to the channel. Triangle theories just don't work, people. Yeah.
We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube. Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a Super Thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation Fives by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.